I, James K. Polk, do solemnly swear to uphold this Constitution. Now, I have been elected by my fellow countrymen to the most honorable and prestigious office on this earth. Now, without further ado, we will annex California. We will annex Washington and all the lands. But I know what you're thinking. Uh, another country, you might have heard of them, Mexico. They uh, own this land currently. But don't worry, I'll buy the land, and well, if that doesn't work, trust me, I'll get the land, my fellow American, through any tactic I deem fit. Well, so much for buying land, Mexico, shockingly, they rejected the offer. You know, who wouldn't want to sell me half a million square miles for, you know, $25 million. Well, yes, my dream of manifest destiny is over. Unless, <laughs> hitherto, America has witnessed two major wars, the War of Independence and the War of 1812. The Revolutionary War, it was started by Britain and America escalating tensions until war became inevitable. The War of 1812 started by Britain provoking America into a war. Maybe there is something I can learn from this. <laughs> I know. I'm going to send American troops into disputed territory. You know, that's not morally ambiguous at all. <laughs> And thus I did it, and soon the cause of war begun. Troops would rally to arms to fight in Polk's war. But let's be real, any objective person can see that my tactics were underhanded. Nah, let's call it slick. <laughs> my war was supported by Southerners and Westerners. Uh, there was considerable opposition from the North, unfortunately. Like one of these guys, I don't know, never heard of him. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> he says that despite your claims of America being attacked by Mexico, I would repute that we provoked a Mexican attack by moving our troops into disputed territory. We have sacrificed principle for power. And America can be trusted with power. He, uh, he continues that thousands of soldiers will die and what about the precedent you set for future administrations? Eh, you know, this is a one-time exchange for, exchange of sacrificing principle for power like, like the Boston Tea Party. You know, this surely won't become tradition. And, uh, wow, look at that. We won the war. Uh, as I would live through my uh, final days in office, I reminisced on the legacy I left. In one term, I annexed both California, Texas, and all the lands in between. But I do admit, maybe we, you know, weren't justified in doing that, but ah, who cares? The opportunity was too good to let simple morals get in the way. And uh, as I came to my final day, I prayed that my actions would not be a precedent for America's future golden age. But wait, I'm dead. I'm a ghost now, what? <laughs> Let's, uh, here's a newspaper with our nation's history. Now, let's see. Uh, most well-known presidents, well, I mean, I got us California and Texas. Uh, Washington, Lincoln, Herbert Hoover. <laughs> oh, I, I, here I am. I am the 30th most well-known president <laughs> for all I've done. Okay, let's look at our nation's history. 
William McKinley declares war on Spain due to a ship being sunk in Cuba. Um, after the war concluded, we got Hawaii and nationalism was everywhere. Um, well, sadly, it looks like my actions, they uh, were a precedent that stayed and engulfed our history. What's this? California and Texas are the two largest states by population and GDP? You're welcome. <laughs> I'm complex. You see, we kind of, my actions have led to an ideological shift in how we view ourselves on the world stage. In certain wars, we've sacrificed both life and principle for power. As others look through my now digitalized journal, I realize that my precedents and consequences are eternal. Thank you. <laughs>